Have you ever heard the wild story about a man who supposedly powered his home by stealing energy from a nearby radio transmitter? It sounds like something out of a science fiction movie, right? But for decades, tales have circulated about people harnessing power from radio waves, particularly around the Detroit Witch Transmitter. Some claim it was possible to save on electricity bills by tapping into the power radiated from these massive signals. But is there any truth to these stories? Today, we'll unravel this electrifying mystery and explore what really happened behind the myths of power-stealing radio waves. Stay tuned. The Origins of the Story The tale begins in the early 1930s, when a massive broadcasting station known as the Detroit Witch started transmitting. Located near Detroit, this station boasted two towering 700-foot masts that radiated a 500-kilowatt signal at 200 kilohertz. The station was powerful enough to supply electricity to 5,000 homes, but that's not all. Soon after it was up and running, rumors began to swirl. Residents claimed that they had discovered a way to tap into this energy and light up their homes for free. One version of the story tells of a man living just across the road from the station who supposedly rigged a system to harvest the energy from the radio waves. With the help of makeshift aerials and inductors, he allegedly powered his entire house using nothing but the signal. Some even claim that other nearby farmers strung up wires with light bulbs to illuminate their barns. But what made the story even juicier was that the BBC, which had been monitoring the station, allegedly threatened to sue these locals for stealing their power. This urban legend has been told and retold for nearly a century, with variations that span different locations and transmitters. Yet, the central figure remains the same an inventive, resourceful individual who figured out a way to make the most of free radio waves. But as we dig deeper, we'll see that the truth behind these stories is much less fantastical than it seems. The Power of Radio Transmissions At first glance, the idea of harnessing power from radio waves might seem plausible. After all, radio towers broadcast powerful signals that reach great distances, but the truth is, the amount of usable energy that can be extracted from radio frequencies, RF, is incredibly small. Radio waves are a form of electromagnetic radiation, which, while able to carry information, do not carry enough energy that can be harvested for practical use. To understand this, we need to dive into the physics behind it. Radio waves propagate through the air but their energy density is quite low by the time they reach the ground. The power generated by a radio transmitter is typically spread over a large area, with much of it directed away from the immediate surroundings. Even if you were standing right next to a transmitter, the amount of energy you could collect would be negligible. In theory, it might be possible to extract a small amount of power from these signals using antennas and coils but it would be nowhere near enough to power a home or a barn. To put it simply, radio signals are not designed to carry the kind of energy required to run appliances or light up rooms. So, while a small light bulb might flicker from RF energy, the reality is that it's more of a fun experiment than a viable power source. The myth versus reality. Now, let's address the most pressing question. Did people really steal power from radio transmitters? Or is this just an urban myth that's been passed down through generations? The answer, unfortunately, is much more mundane than the stories suggest. While it's true that certain transmitters, like the Detroit Witch, were massive and radiated strong signals, the amount of power they transmitted was simply not sufficient to power a home, farm, or even a single light bulb in any meaningful way. First, it's important to note that the power radiated by these transmitters was intended for broadcasting signals, not for generating usable electricity. The energy that could be harvested from these signals was incredibly minimal. In fact, experiments conducted on radio signals and energy harvesting 
show that any power collected would be insufficient to operate electrical devices, much less power a household. Moreover, the stories about the BBC threatening to sue individuals for stealing power don't hold up. There's no record of any actual legal action taken against people for harnessing radio waves in this way, and the claims about prosecutions are largely unsubstantiated. In fact, most of these stories have been traced back to folklore or exaggerated anecdotes. The idea of people harvesting enough power to light up homes is more fiction than fact, and it seems the power of suggestion and the allure of the unknown created a myth that people were eager to believe. The most probable explanation is that these tales were born from a misunderstanding of the minimal effect radio waves can have on nearby electrical devices. For example, a fluorescent bulb may flicker or glow faintly when placed near a radio source, but this is far from the massive power generation that the myths suggest. Similar stories and urban legends. The Detroit Witch story isn't the only one of its kind. Similar tales of individuals stealing power from radio transmitters have surfaced all over the world, often involving farmers or locals who lived near large broadcasting stations. One such story comes from the UK, where it was claimed that a farmer near the Brookman's Park transmitting station in Hertfordshire had set up an antenna to power parts of his home. Again, engineers supposedly discovered a hole in the signal pattern, and the farmer was caught. In this case, however, it's unlikely that any power was actually harvested in any usable form. Another story comes from the BBC's Daventry transmitter in the 1980s, where it was alleged that people living near the transmitter were able to keep their fluorescent bulbs lit without turning them on. This phenomenon, however, was probably due to a small, unintended current induced by the radio waves, a phenomenon that might make a bulb glow faintly, but couldn't power an entire household. In some versions of these stories, it suggested that farmers used coils of wire to collect RF energy and power their barns, or even light up animal shelters. However, these claims are highly dubious. In many cases, the individuals involved likely experienced a slight electrical effect from being near the transmitter, but this wouldn't be anywhere near enough to illuminate a barn much less power an entire farm. These urban legends reflect a mix of fascination with technology and a natural curiosity about the unknown. People love the idea of stealing energy from invisible sources, especially when it seems so easy and harmless. But in reality, the power generated by radio waves is far too small and too diffuse to be of any real use, no matter how clever the setup. What's really going on? So, what's the truth behind all these stories? Can you actually steal power from a radio transmitter? Or is it all just fiction? The answer lies like radio waves and how we perceive their energy. While it's true that radio waves can induce small electrical currents in nearby objects, the energy involved is minuscule. In fact, the power density of radio waves decreases significantly the further you are from the transmitter. Real-world experiments have shown that it's possible to light a small bulb near a radio source, but the energy required to power anything beyond a tiny device is far beyond what can be harvested from these signals. Even if you were to gather energy from a radio wave with a large antenna, the power would be so small that it wouldn't even register as usable energy for practical devices. The stories of farmers lighting barns or powering their homes are simply exaggerations, fueled by a mix of myth and misunderstanding. While there may have been isolated incidents where small amounts of energy were collected, these events were more akin to novelty experiments than actual power generation. The cost and effort involved in setting up such systems far outweighs any potential savings on electricity bills. In short, radio waves, no matter how powerful the transmitter, just aren't a viable source of energy. The notion that someone could power an entire house by stealing radio waves from a transmitter is nothing more than an urban legend. Conclusion In conclusion, 
while the stories of people harnessing power from radio transmitters, like the Detroit Witch Station, may sound intriguing, they are largely myths. Despite the impressive power radiated by these transmitters, the amount of usable energy is far too small to power homes, barns, or even light bulbs effectively. Most of these tales have been fueled by misunderstandings of how radio waves work and are often exaggerated over time. While it's true that small electrical effects can occur near a transmitter, they're insufficient for any practical use. The stories, often passed down as urban legends, mix fact with fiction, and the reality is far less exciting. Radio waves, no matter how powerful, simply don't have the energy density needed to power devices. So, while it's fun to imagine the possibilities, it's clear that these power-stealing tales belong to the realm of myths, not science.